So let's take a look at our thermochemistry unit. We're going to start off pretty simple by just describing energy and its role in chemistry. So energy can be defined as the capacity to supply heat or to do work and can be classified into one of two categories, kinetic energy, which is the energy of movement, or potential energy, which is stored energy. And in chemistry, we're really going to focus a lot on thermal energy, which is the energy of moving particles, and chemical energy, which is the energy stored in bonds. So let's start by being more specific on our definition of potential energy. For chemistry, potential energy is the energy of something because of its position or its composition. And we're going to really be looking at chemical energy, the energy stored in chemical bonds. When two atoms start getting closer to each other, there are some attractive forces because the positive nucleus of one atom pulls on the, elect the negative electrons of another atom and they will form a bond. And when that happens, it actually releases energy and becomes more stable. Now, this amount of energy that is released is the amount of energy that would be needed to put back in to break those bonds. Um, and we'll go into more details about bond breaking and bond forming later on. Now, kinetic energy is the energy of something uh, because of its motion and its movement. Now, in chemistry, we're really going to focus on thermal energy or the movement of heat. And what we want to remember is that heat always moves from where there are high concentrations of heat to where there are low concentrations of heat. And we'll talk about more specifics on thermal temperature and heat and how they're all related. But very simply, if I look at this picture of the IR scan of somebody's hand, here in these bright pink areas, it's where it's the warmest, where there is the most heat. And over time, these bright pink areas are going to cool off, and the areas around it will start to get a little bit warmer. Now, the principle that we have to remember when we are talking about chemistry and energy is that during a chemical or physical change, energy can be neither created nor destroyed, but it can change forms. And the goal of thermochemistry is to understand those changes in form and how we can utilize them to accomplish whatever goals we may have as scientists or as engineers. Now, I do want to get into a, a chemical reaction just a little bit to kind of give you an idea of how to think about thermochemistry. So every chemical reaction is always associated with some form of energy change going from kinetic chemical or kinetic energy to potential energy or vice versa. Most chemical reactions start off at some energetic state. There, there's some energy in those bonds because they formed. And it's going to take some kinetic energy. In this one, in this picture here, this green sphere is going to move towards the blue and the red and when they crash into each other that kinetic energy is the starting of the reaction and it's going to lead to bond breaking bond breaking always takes energy and we get to some situation now where all our atoms are kind of jumbled up and new bonds can start to form bond forming always releases energy and so when new bonds form we see a drop in energy, just like we saw back in the reaction diagram. And this is what I want to measure. And we'll get into more specifics later, but on a fundamental scale, what thermochemistry is, is trying to figure out how much energy is there in my reactants and how much energy is there in my products. And when the products are at a lower energy than the reactants, then we got energy out of that reaction. And I can use that reaction to do work and do heat. If the energy of my products is higher than my reactants, then really what I did is I'm storing energy for use later on. And it's going to be these two things going between storing energy or using the energy that we really want to get into in later topics. So hopefully that was a good start. And hopefully you are kind of understanding that we really want to keep track of the changes in energy from reactants to products, from chemical energy to thermal energy.